So first, <laughs> just let's review a couple of things we talked about in the last class. First one is measuring operating leverage. So we said that to measure operating leverage, our fixed costs and our variable costs, we look at sales and we look, we look at profit. So sales and profit. <coughs> so we gave the example of the last time. One company, uh, both companies, company A and company B. Both companies have the same sales. Their sales are 100. Okay, year one and year two. So sales and profit. Okay. So this is year one. This is year two. We have A and B. <coughs> so, they make the same sales. So in year one is 100, in year two it's 50. But the company here, in year one, they also make the same profit. Their profit is 20. Okay? <coughs> But in year two, the companies make a different profit. Company A makes a profit of uh, 15, but company B makes a loss of 10. Which company has higher fixed costs? Company A or company B? B. Company B, why? Because of the same uh, amount of sales, uh, it uh, has the loss. Uh, and it means that fixed costs It means its fixed costs must be higher, right? Why did company A still make a profit of 15, even though its sales went down? Because it had variable costs, okay? So, for example, company A is an airline, okay? And company B, is a delivery company. Okay, so local delivery company. So on company A, the airline, they have the fixed costs, they have to make a certain number of flights, okay? They have to have a certain number of pilots, they already paid for the airplanes. But company B, the delivery company, just uses its car when it has business. If it doesn't have business, it doesn't <coughs> use the car, okay? Or it doesn't hire people if it doesn't have much business. So it has more variable cost. So it's going to still make profit. Still make a profit in the second year. So if this company has 100% fixed cost, how much was its cost? in year one for company A. How much was it cost? 80. 80. How much was this company's cost? 80. 80, right? In this year, how much was this company's cost? 35. And how much was this company cost? 60. 60. So this company has higher fixed cost, right? Maybe this, the fixed cost is 50 here and variable cost is 10. And in this case, the fixed cost is going to be uh, just 20, and variable cost will be higher percentage. So, just do this equation for these two companies. The percentage change in EBIT between the two years, and the percentage change in revenues. So calculate this number for company A and company B, just to practice. So make the calculation. Sales is also called revenues, okay? And profit is also called EBIT. Okay, in other words, <coughs> EBIT sa revenue sales, EBIT profit. Okay, so this is year one, and this is year two. So what was the change? Company A changed from 100 to 50. What percent change is that? 
It was 150. What percentage was the change? 50%. Do you know how to calculate that? If we have, we are going to take total, two years, right? Total year uh, one minus total year two. What's on the bottom line? What's on the bottom line? Total year one. Okay, so that's 100 minus 50 over 100. Okay, that's 50 over 100. It's 0 0.5 or 50%. Okay, doesn't matter which one you use. So calculate the change for company A in sales. Here it was 100, here it's 50. Calculate the change in A of profit. So do this equation. Okay. Try the equation by yourself. You should be able to calculate the change from year between year one and year two. If it's 100 in year one and it's 50 in year two, what was the change? If it's 100 in year one and it's 50 in year two, what percent was the change? 25. It's 100 in year one, it goes down to 50 in year two. How much did it change? How much percent did it change? You don't need to do a calculation. We're using the number 100. <coughs> I had 100, now I have 50. How much did I lose? 50, what percent is that? 50%, okay? Sometimes you don't need to do the calculation. This is the calculation, okay? But we're using the number 100, so you can see the change more quickly. So calculate the changes, and then put the change in profit over the change in, in revenue and you should get a number for company A and a company B that number will be your operating leverage Airline in place. 
We need two numbers. The first number we need is change in revenue, percentage change in revenue, right? And the second number we need is percentage change in sales. Okay, so we have to do this for company A and company B, right? So company A, the revenue, what's the change in revenue for company A? What percent? 50% change in revenue. What's the sorry, change in revenue and change in EBIT or profit. What is the change in profit for company A? The change in profit is 25%. How did you get this number? 20 minus 15 and divided by 20. 20 minus 15 over 20. Okay? Year one minus year two over year one. This gives us the percentage change between year one and year two, okay? If you're studying finance, this is a very simple equation. If I ask you how much profit did you make last year, you have to be able to tell me the di difference between the change between one year and the next year, right? So year two, year one minus year two over year one. Okay, what about company B? What's the percentage change in revenues? 50, the same, the revenues was the same. What about the EBIT? What's the percentage change? Hmm? The change in profit for company B? 150. How did you get this number? Same way. 20 minus, minus, 10. minus 10 over 20. So, 
30 over 20 equals 150%, okay? So then we get our operating leverage measure, which is change in EBIT over change in revenues. So this number is change in EBIT, this number is change in revenues, okay? So for company A, it's going to be uh, 25 over 50, okay? And for company B, it's going to be 150 over 50. So what's the answer for company A? 0 0.5. What's the answer for company B? 3. 3. Okay, so uh, we can see that this is a low number. Okay, so this is a high number. So this company has a high operating leverage. Okay, it means that high fixed cost. This company has high fixed cost. Okay? This company has a high variable cost, low fixed cost. So, this equation is helping us. We could see from common sense. I asked you which company has a higher fixed cost. Okay? It's clear that this company, B, has a higher fixed cost. Because the revenues was the same, but their profit was different. Therefore, their costs didn't change as much. Even though their revenue went down, their costs didn't go down. Okay? So that means a high fixed cost. My revenue goes down, but my, my uh, costs don't go down much. High fixed cost. Okay? So I make more loss. So this is just a numerical way. It's a number that we can use to compare to other companies. Okay? Company A's number is 0 0.5. Company B's number is 3. Okay, if we compare to other companies in the industry, we can see uh, whether this company has a high fixed cost or not compared to the industry. Okay? So we could compare the airline to other companies in the airline industry. Does Korean Air have high fixed cost compared to other companies in the airline industry? Well, let's see. Let's check its change in profit over its change in sales and see. Okay, do you have any questions about this one? Just reviewing from the last class with some questions. Okay. Uh, so we saw that Disney's number, 0 0.97 for this. So we also talked about uh, this another new equation, which was changing from the unlevered and levered beta. So, levered means including debt. Unlevered means not including debt. Okay? If you, do, if you don't know that, you need to write that down, right? Levered equals including debt. Unlevered equals not including debt. So, when we're talking about leverage, we're talking about debt and how much debt do we have? Okay. So levered beta equals including debt. Unlevered beta equals not including debt. Okay, including debt, not including debt. Okay, which one is going to be higher? Which beta will be higher? Levered, right? The company with more debt, or including debt, is going to be riskier than if we take out the debt. Okay, so why do we want the unlevered beta? Because the reason we're finding the unlevered beta is we want to find bottom up beta. Okay, we want to find the average for the industry. And then we're going to add our company's debt at the end. Okay? So we want to find the average for the industry without including debt. That's why we get the unlevered beta. So in order to get the unlevered beta, we need to know our debt to equity ratio. Okay? Another simple equation that you're expected to know, right? How, like change in revenue, you should know that. Debt to equity is a very simple equation. Okay? If I have debt of 30 and equity of 100, what is my debt to equity ratio? 
Zero point thirty percent, right? So thirty over hundred is thirty percent. So we have a debt to equity ratio of thirty percent. So uh, here we can see debt is on the top line, equity is on the bottom line. Okay, is that clear? Thirty over hundred is thirty uh, percent. Okay. So. Uh, we then just put this into the equation. The reason we add in tax here is because we get some tax benefit from paying debt. So we have to take away the tax. If we have no debt, we have to take away this tax benefit. Okay? So that's why we have this equation. So just, we don't need to know where the equation came from, just we need to know that this is the equation for calculating the unlevered uh, beta. So we can see this for Disney. Disney's debt to equity ratio was 24%, 0.24. The tax rate in the US was 38%, so we put the tax rate here. We put their current beta here. And we find Disney's unlevered beta, 0.82. Lower than the levered beta. This is levered and unlevered uh, beta. Another thing we talked about in the last class to review is uh, weighted average, weighted average, okay? So, I think I've made a little bit of a complicated explanation, so we'll try to make a simpler one, right? We have number two, one, and zero. What is the average? One, okay? So we have two plus one plus zero over three is the average, okay? So that's 3 over 3 equals 1. We don't need to do that. We can see 1 is the average. Right? But what is a weighted average? Okay? Say that I have 50% 2. I have 25% 1. And I have 25% 0. Okay? Now, what's, what is the weighted average? Yes. Okay. So now we're going to do a weighted average. We're going to get 50% is 0 0.5. So 2 multiplied by 0 0.5 equals 1. 1 multiplied by 0.25 equals 0 0.25. 0 multiplied by 0 0.25. Right, we add these together, what do we get? 1.25 is our weighted average. Okay? Can you understand weighted average? In, in this case, our average should be higher than 1. We can see that we have 50% 2, we have 25% 1, and 25% 0. So if we look at this, we know that our average must be higher than 1. Okay? So to calculate the weighted average, we just multiply the percent <coughs> by the number and add them together. Okay, this is called a weighted average. We can use this very often in finance, so you should know how to make a weighted average. Okay? So for example, I have stock A, stock B, and stock C, right? And I want to find my average return. Stock A made a profit of 2, stock B made a profit of 1, stock C didn't make any profit. Okay? I own, my portfolio is 50% stock A, 25% stock B. 25% stock C. What was my average return last year? Okay, 1.25. Okay. I own 50% of this stock, 25% of this stock, 25% of this stock. So this is making the weighted average. Okay. Do you have any questions about weighted average? Can you do a weighted average calculation? Yes? Yes? <coughs> because we have, we are already less than one here. This is just fifty percent of twenty-five. We already know this. In the other case, in the other case, we would have made thirty-three point three percent, thirty-three point three percent, thirty-three point three percent. If we divided it up, right? Then that would be 0 0.67, 0 0.33 and zero equals one. Okay. So then let's try, you, you can try a weighted average calculation. Just I'll write some numbers on the board, and I want you to tell me the weighted average 
<coughs> so I have 20% 6, okay? Stock A, 20% 4, stock B, 35% 1, stock C, okay? That's uh, and 25% zero stock D. So I, I own stock 20% of stock A, 20% of stock B, 35% of stock C, and 25% of stock Z D. Okay? This was the profit each stock made last year. Tell me the weighted average. What is the weighted average here? So you have to do the calculation. Point three five. Right, so it's two point three five. Okay. So this is calculating the weighted average. So this part is not on the exam, just we skip this part about capital cities. So we, we said that uh, the, the uh, regression beta has some problems, right? So, especially standard error. So we are going. To, we can also do the bottom up beta, and it's also the bottom up beta gives us a better reflection of today's business. What kind of business we're in today? The regression beta includes our business from five years ago. So five years ago, our business might have been different than today. We acquired a new company, or we changed our business. So the bottom-up beta can give us a good idea. So uh, we talked about Disney's bottom-up beta in the last uh, class. Or we were in the middle of calculating Disney's bottom-up beta. So what we did is we said, Disney has four different businesses. It has media, parks and resorts, studio entertainment, and consumer products. Do you know what movie is Disney making these days? Very famous movie. <coughs> no? Next year it's going to release. With Harrison Ford. Star Wars. Did you watch Star Wars? Before? Christmas. So Disney is currently making Star Wars, right? So it has different types of business. How important is each business? We saw TV and radio is Disney's most important business. Next is theme parks. Movies is only 10% of Disney's business. Okay? And toys is just 2% of Disney's business. So if we know this, and we know the unlevered beta for that industry, where did we get this number from? The industry on leverage beta. Where did we get that number from? We know Disney's proportion. We found this. Where did we get this number? The on leverage beta for media network industry. Where did we get that? Can you remember? We looked at all of the media networks in the US. Okay, and we got the average, average beta, and then we took away the debt to make it an unlevered beta. Okay, so this is 
the average beta of media networks in the US, average beta of parks and resorts, okay? So then we do this weighted average calculation, okay? Multiply this by this, this by this, and add together. We get 0 0.733 as unlevered beta for Disney. <coughs> so we can add in cash. So Disney has a cash balance. Uh, cash has a zero uh, beta. So we can just add in the cash. We can take away the cash to make this is unlevered without uh, debt. And this is going to be not including the cash. We can also take out the cash that Disney has from the beta. <clears throat> so then we uh, allocate the debt across <coughs> businesses. We want to find out Disney's debt. So we find here the different four different businesses. The debt to equity ratio of the competitors. Okay. Then we estimate the debt in uh, Disney, and then we check uh, Disney's debt. So we get a debt to equity number for each business. Okay. So what we are going to do is now change the unlevered beta to a levered beta, back to the levered beta by using Disney's debt. So we find the debt to equity ratio in each business. Where does Disney have more debt? Disney has most debt in the parks and resorts business. Okay, next is studio entertainment, movies. Lowest is the consumer product. Okay. So I guess that when Disney made their parks and resorts, they had to spend a lot of money to build the park, right? So they took out a lot of loans in that case. So then we have a cost of equity for each, each business. And then again we just get the weighted average. We multiply the levered beta by the debt to equity ratio. And then we find the average. So <coughs> we get the equity for Disney, cost of equity for Disney as a company. So, we can uh, find our answer is 0 0.8460. So slightly different than the regression beta. The regression beta was 0 0.95, okay? So the bottom of beta, is uh, 0 0.8460. Okay. So just to go back over what we did again for the bottom of beta for Disney, we're going to look at the bottom of beta for other companies too. So if you didn't understand this time, it's okay, right? We're going to go through it again. First of all, we broke down Disney into four different businesses. Okay. We found the average unlevered beta for each business by looking at other companies. Okay? Uh, we found the value uh, of each Disney's business in their company. We found the value of each business inside Disney's company. Gave it a percentage. By doing this, we can find an unlevered beta for Disney of 0 0.733. But we can also find out that Disney has cash. So we want to take away the cash from the beta. So we, we use this equation to take away the cash. Then we, uh, we have an unlevered beta for Disney, right? So what do we need to do? We need to, lever, we need to add in the debt, right? We have an unlevered beta. We need to make it a levered beta to compare it to the other companies. So we look at Disney's debt, debt to equity ratio in each business, okay? We can do that by finding out how much debt Disney has, looking at their balance sheet, right? Their accounts, and making a debt to equity ratio. For example, in media networks, Disney has eight 
billion in debt and 25 billion in equity. Okay? So in their media networks business, their debt to equity ratio is 33%. Okay? So then here we write that information 33, 54, 45, and we change the unlevered beta to a levered beta. And then we find the average uh, for the levered beta. And uh, we uh, get our answer. So let's have a look for the other companies. Well, first let's discuss this question. Assume that you are the chief financial officer in Disney. The head of the movie business has come to you with a new big budget movie he would like you to fund. He says that his analysis of the movie indicates it will generate a return of equity of 12%. Do you understand return of equity? Return on equity means that we're going to make a profit of 12%. Okay? Would you fund it? Yes, it is higher than the cost of equity for Disney as a company. No, it is lower than the cost of equity for the movie business. So let's compare. What is the cost of equity for Disney as a company? 8.91%, the average. Okay. What is the cost of equity for Disney's movie, Studio Entertainment? 13.53%. So the Studio Entertainment cost of equity is 13.53%. Disney's cost of equity as a company is 8.9%. Okay. The movie you have a movie that's going to make a profit of 12%. Are you going to invest in the movie or not? Discuss with your partner. Okay? So studio entertainment cost of equity is higher than Disney as a company, 13.5. Disney as a company is 8.9. So which one are you going to use when you're deciding whether to invest in... Right? This is like the hurdle rate or the risk for Disney as a company. This is the hurdle rate or risk for the movie business in Disney. So, somebody comes to you, this movie can make a 12% profit. Star Wars, Star Wars is going to make a 12% profit. Are you going to say, yes, let's invest in Star Wars, or no, we won't invest in Star Wars? So which hurdle rate are you going to use? Specifically for the movie entertainment, or for Disney as a company? So discuss with your partner. Okay, so let's see a show of hands. Okay, you have to put up your hand for either yes or no. Okay, two options. Have a guess if you're not sure, right? 
Company cost of equity 8.9. Movie sector cost of equity 13.4. Estimated profit on movie 12%. Yes, I'm going to invest in the movie. Hands up. No, I'm not going to invest in the movie. Hands up. Okay, so everybody has to put up their hand. Let's try again. Yes, I'm going to invest in the movie. No, I'm not going to invest in the movie. Okay, so we can see that most people have the correct answer. Okay, no, we're not going to invest in the movie. Okay, because this cost of equity is telling us this is the risk for Disney, for movie industry, for movies, right? So if we only make a 12% profit on our movie, that's below the risk of making that movie. Okay, even though as a company, the it's just eight or nine percent. It seems we make a profit of twelve percent. It just costs us nine percent to get the money, so it's okay, right? But what will happen over time is that all of the money is going to be invested in the movie industry, okay? Because it can make a higher return than the other parts of the company. The company is going to start changing. Okay, we are going to be only. We're, in the end, we're going to be only a movie company. Okay, do you understand that idea? If we accept this investment, we say, "Well, that's a high return. Let's accept this investment, right?" Then we are not going to invest in toys. We are not going to invest in other things. We're going to do all our projects in the movie industry. Okay, so our company is going to change. Right? It will be too risky for us. So this is an important uh, line here. Media networks risk is 8.6%. Parks and resorts, 8.2%. Children's toys, 10%. Movies, very high, 14%. Okay? Is, is movies a risky business, making a movie? Yes. yes, a lot of movies can make a big profit. But movies are very expensive and they can be a failure. Okay? You can make a movie for a hundred million and you only get back 50 million at the box office, okay? So the danger here is that we decide to keep investing in the movie because it has a high return, then our company starts losing money because the risk is too high, right? The risk is up here. Okay, do you have any question about that? Does anyone have any question about that? So when we're just, yes? Uh, how do we get the unlevered beta for media networks? Yes, sure. We looked at this example here. Here are all of the companies in the US, right? We find all their betas on Yahoo Finance, and we find their debt to equity ratio on finance. Then we use this equation to find the unlevered beta, okay? <clears throat> this equation, current beta over 1 plus 1 time minus the tax rate, we know the tax rate in the US, 38%, right? Multiplied by the average debt to equity ratio, okay? And this is where we get the unlevered beta from. So we get the average for all the companies. We use this equation, okay? to change a levered beta to an unlevered beta. The information we need to change a levered beta to an unlevered beta is we need the beta to know the beta and we need to know the debt to equity ratio. Okay? If we know that average of all those things, then we can find the uh, this is the average for the average debt to equity for the industry, average beta for the industry. Put those into the equation and then we can find the unlevered beta. Okay? So, a good question. Okay, then we find the unlevered beta for each industry. And in Disney's case, uh, we add on the uh, debt to equity ratio for Disney. Okay? This is the debt to equity ratio for Disney. So, we add back in the debt for Disney. We get our levered beta for Disney. Then, with our levered beta, we find our cost of equity, right? We know how to do this. Risk-free rate, right? Plus uh, beta times the risk premium. So we put that into our equation and we get these cost of equity. Okay, for each business, we get the average. 
This is the average cost of equity for Disney. This is the cost of equity for each business sector. If I'm working in one business sector, which am I more worried about? The cost of equity for Disney or the cost of equity for my business sector? Which am I more worried about? If I work in one sector of Disney, let's say I work in Disney parks and resorts, which am I more worried about? Cost of equity for Disney or cost of equity for parks and resorts? Parks and resorts, okay? It's almost like a different company, almost, inside Disney. Do you have any other questions? So, the reason we have to do this, just to repeat again, if we don't use the individual cost of equity, the money is slowly going to drift towards this one, which has the highest risk and the highest return, right? If we don't use the specific one, we just use the 8.9%, we're going to start only investing in movies, only investing in movies, right? This sector is going to get too big. These sectors are going to be too small, and our company will get too ri risky. So we have to think about each sector. So let's take a break now uh, for 10 minutes.